Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this series of do-it-yourself Cisco UCC troubleshooting study kit, I'm going to show you how to use some of the common troubleshooting tools that use, that are related to UCC. Now, in order to troubleshoot any environment, it is important that you understand that environment very well before you start troubleshooting a network. Whether it is a Cisco routing switching network or collaboration or contact center, you should have a good understanding about the topology, followed by having good understanding about the product itself. Now, uh, a lot of people try to troubleshoot things on the uh, on demand without having uh, in in depth knowledge about the protocol or the product itself or how it works, and they end up trying to troubleshoot something blindfully. Next is too important that you understand how to use the appropriate troubleshooting tools or when to use which troubleshooting tools. Now, troubleshooting is not uh, something that you can train someone in a five days training or a 10 days training because most of the troubleshooting environment is, a very, well, first of all, common sense. And then, of course, you must have uh, experience that goes along with it. This video is um, basically is going to provide you a guide to use the most common troubleshooting utilities and tools at the same time face uh, some of the will start to solve some of the problem that most of us face when we're deploying it now also keep in one thing in mind that there are a lot of troubleshooting scenario that are not you know uh, constructive they're not basically predefined or preset or can be generated in any given time because every customers will have a different environment different product so you will have to learn how to troubleshoot in that environment on a real-time scenario but having an understanding which troubleshooting tools you can use makes it a huge difference so this is our first uh, series of troubleshooting uh, videos for UCCE and we believe that at the time of creating this video that this is the world's most unique UCC troubleshooting study kit and I hope you will enjoy it so I'm going to walk you through some of the most common troubleshooting tools that are going to be used throughout this course so that you can get a familiar with familiarity with them. Okay, so one of the most common troubleshooting tools that we're going to use uh, are available under UCCE tools. And you'll see that on a desktop, you have something called UCC service control. Now UCCE service control uh, is basically where all list of all the services that you can see and that uh, if you know is a first place of the indication whether the service is running or not. Now just because a service is running doesn't mean the service is actually working the way it's supposed to. For example, you might have a PG, a service running, but it may not be active with the call manager. So though service control uh, status may give you a, a positive indication, but it does not necessarily mean the service or component is working the way it's supposed to. Now you can uh, at any given time uh, take a service you can start the start start and stop the services there are time where you may have to recycle a service in order to you know bring the service back online so go ahead and you can use a recycle option now most services by default when you co include the component they will be manual now manual which is a good thing uh, in some scenario could be a bad thing in other scenario for example, when the service is set to manual and you happen to reboot the server, the service do not come automatic. That means you will have to manually intervene by logging into the server and reboot the server itself or the, reboot the services itself. Now, in a scenario where you may not, uh, where the server reboot itself and comes back online and you're not aware of the services is, uh, or well, if the service is not set to automatic, then you either have to have an alert set up where you are notified that the server rebooted so that you can take the manual action. <coughs> now, again, if you set this to be automatic and if you want, if the service does reboot, then you want to make sure that the services are started in a certain, certain uh, you know, order uh, because you may have certain application that needs to be activated first before this service comes back online. So, you really have to evaluate that based on your environment. Now, these are only the UCCE related services, but you see this little button called All. You can select that, and that will list all the services that you have within your call uh, Windows Server. You can select those services, and you have the options to start them right from here. Or you can also go to Start uh, Administrative Tools, 
and then you select the service applet so it's basically a 32-bit client of a service applet that you already have the only option is that of course the you have the option to filter all the UCCE versus all the Windows services that comes with it so if I uncheck this I will only see the UCCE related service except the ICM diagnostic but if I check them I will see the all the services that we have so sometimes it makes sense to use this sometimes it makes sense to use services totally up to you whatever you feel comfortable okay so as you can see these are all my options from a service applet second thing second uh, tools under the service tools folder you will find a bunch of uh, utilities that are available at uh, to uh, troubleshoot your network the most common one is called the F diagnostic framework portico if i click on that you will notice that that uh, a web page will come up with a username and password capability uh, uh, prompting now you notice how the service page is not running so that means is an indication that uh, the service that is running on port 7890 is not currently activated so what we have to do is go to uh, services and you will see there's called ICM diagnostic framework you notice the service is not running so you must uh, activate the services sometime when you reboot the server this service may not be uh, running and it is important that the service is running for you to troubleshoot there are many utilities that you can use that remotely log in and manage the UC UCCE service like for example RTMT or a third-party tool it does require this service to be uh, running at all given time if you want the services to be monitored now if I once I run this if I refresh this it should give me a login option of course certificate issue click on it now this is very important if you try to put the word administrator and password sometimes you will get a 404 uh, forbidden that's an indication that you did not supply the password with the end Windows authentication for, uh, method so you got to close this you can not just refresh it close it go back to the tools click on framework and you want to make sure you enter the username with the following format pod1 or whatever your domain name with the administrator and that will take you to the framework protocol now from there of course on left hand side you got all the commands that you want to run um, you know one of the most common the one that we use is called list services and when you click on list services you get to see all the services that are running you see the ICM diagnostic framework um, this particular service is running but is a red red it is, is an indication that the service has been up within uh, and has been up and running for less than five minutes if the color is yellow that's an indication that uh, the service will, has been running between 5 to 10 minutes and after 10 minutes it is all gray as you can see the router side now for example if I were to go and shut down the router A and you will notice the service is gone from the page now you don't see this is moving because you need to click on refresh and you notice the server A is has less information because nodes are not there and as you can see server A is now completely gone from the uh, services so what we're gonna do we're gonna restart the server and as we restart the server you should see server A router A comes back up with all red because it's been running for five uh, less than uh, five minutes now as you let it go you will see beyond five minutes it will be all yellow now I'll come back to that and show you that the yellow portion of it now um, if you want to find out what version of your uh, UCCE you're running you can click on get product version and in a get product version you can click on submit it will tell you what version of the product that you're currently running uh, maintenance release minor release and major release this could be useful for upgrading as well as uh, getting a base understanding about what product what versions that you're running you have the options to uh, fee, uh, also um, click on list services which will list all the services that you have running on in the system and as you can see in the list services I have uh, logger a is currently running with this uh, username and password so log on as 
uh, startup is set to auto you have the routers running and the diagnostic now these services that you see right here they are coming from this list they don't include all the windows services though keep that in mind now you can also get platform information which allows you to see uh, you know information about your server uh, such as windows name uh, what version of the windows what you know which drive it is being installed and whatnot now aside from that you have uh, some network uh, capable uh, utility such as get ping and I can if from here I can do a quick pinging so let's say I want to ping my um, 64 53 which is my admin server and when I click on that it should give me an output result to tell me what the status of my pinging is now of course this will be put into the result of a text file and you can use this as a baseline creating a documentation or create a baseline for troubleshooting or monitoring so this is really quite useful if you are remotely managing the system you can get the IP config collect the status about the, all the uh, IP addresses you can get net state information from a particular server and that will give you um, information about so it's basically illegal operation okay I'll leave that up for now um, you can also get good uh, configuration categories uh, from various uh, component like I say we'll go through them as we go learn about this product uh, right now we're using a dumb config to see what category configuration it yells out and here you'll see a bunch of information that yells out that could be useful for troubleshooting or gathering information okay so this is the most commonly used now one thing you can uh, do which is pretty much we use a lot called traces in the trace file I can collect traces as I want uh, for various uh, component or processes and I will show you how to use some of these traces later throughout the course uh, in the various chapters to give go in more in depth in analysis of it so for example I can collect statistic about the server I can find out if there is any problem whether the services are running or not uh, if there is anything went down and the reason why went down so a lot of information uh, takes a little time for you to um, get used to it as well as understanding what each components or line is basically doing now again a lot of information may be useful there, there will be also a lot of information that may not necessarily be useful all right so these are our framework portico you can also get uh, inventory of your uh, server I'll tell you what is the IP address the ICM product type the router and as you can see these are all the public address private addresses of your devices okay you can get uh, performance get performance information again tells you the processor time memory um, the queue processor the paging and various other uh, information that could be useful in your troubleshooting environment now that is your framework portico now then of course you have other little utility for example you have system CLI which allows you to do pretty much what uh, the framework uh, page does but on a command line basis now you have a security wizard which allows you to secure your uh, UCC platform so for example it will tell you if you're running Windows firewall what should be you know uh, configuration you can click on configure Windows firewall for UCCE you can edit uh, to launch yeah that's fine it's gonna give you uh, which port that needs to be open as you can see and it's going to actually modify your firewall with those port open so if you want to block certain port this is this is the file that you want to modify and if you do not want, worry about blocking a port then you can just leave it as it is you can add more port if you want here if this is required <coughs> you can also um, go to network isolation okay so I'm going to cancel this in the network isolation where you can create an IPsec policy to be more secure in your environment again I won't go into such uh, at this moment you can also secure the 
hard SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server um, authentication, uh, whether the certain security settings are match or met or not. So if you click next, it will tell you yes, apply, you know, harder security or roll back to the previous one is totally up to you. So if you click on confirm, it's going to go and make the changes to your Microsoft SQL Server. Keep one thing in mind though, when you are uploading Microsoft SQL Server or updating Microsoft SQL Server, make sure you have the necessary permissions to do so. All right, so I got my uh, basic security wizard. Then you have something called SS, uh, SSL encryption utility. What SSL encryption utility does, it, it allows you to reset the SSL key within your web interfaces. So as you can see, you got all instance and I can enable 128 bit encryption and I can disable it as well. I can also go to certificate administration, uninstall the existing one and then reinstall a new one if needed, needed to be. So this is something that you're going to play with if you uh, have updated your SSL certificate. Now on the system CLI, so if I click on that, I can, it will ask me for uh, username and password. So username password will be pod one or whatever your domain account and the pa um, password of course must define. It's going to ask you for instance. If you only have one instance in this server, then you don't really need to supply anything. However, if you do have a multiple instance, then you must specify which instance you want to monitor your um, CLI for. So I'm going, because I only have one instance, I'm going to click on um, uh, hit enter. All right, so as you can see, I am in kind of the command line platform, which basically allows me to do pretty much everything what the framework uh, protocol does, except from CLI. Some guys like CLI, some guys like graphical user interfaces. So just to show you an example, I'm going to say show processes and it will list me all the processes that are currently running. Okay, it's very much similar to what the web interface does, but just a different outlook. All right, so that is your CLI. So let me see if I can exit. Yep. Uh, you also have ICM DBA tools, which is kind of like a small a database utility that allows you to create database and maintenance. So there are time where you have to learn how to troubleshoot the ICM DBA. So uh, our database itself. So you see this error message where giving you warning that unable to retrieve the servers. This is because your computer browser is currently disabled. So you notice how the computer browser is disabled. If you enable that, And once it's enabled, you can start this process. What it does, it kind of do a broadcast and identify all the servers that are currently running ICM or UCC product. So that when you click on this particular utility, uh, you will see all the servers that are capable of running uh, UCC database. So this is your um, ICM DBA utility that allows you to create the database and maintain it. Now you can only create database or maintain that are UCCE related. That means from this particular ICM DBA, you cannot manage your SQL Server databases in general, only UCC related database. Now you can select the server and you can take certain actions such as configure uh, certain things like memory allocations uh, for recovery interval or you can go to data, uh, sorry, database, uh, well, select the database for logger A. You can create a new database if you want, if there is anything left to be created. Remember, just because you have the option for create doesn't mean you can go and create any database. It only you can only create database that are related to UCCE. So I already have two databases right now: C site A and uh, site A logger database and outbound database. If I select the site A logger database, I have the option to let's say delete. I have the options to give you find an estimate how much memory or space I need. So for example, if I want to go to estimate, I can say okay if I have uh, so right now you notice um, based on how much the database size, which kind of like, let me see if I can, yeah, there you go. No. Let me go to full uh, screen. So as you can see, 
it tells me that right now our required database is 700 uh, MB roughly so if I increase it to number of agents let's say <coughs> 250 and I want to have uh, how many skills group let's say 50 skills group then if you scroll down you see the database requirement changes so this could be a good utility for you to uh, plan your environment so that if you know that you're going to have more agent or more calls coming in you can allocate them a space for the database as needed basis okay so that is another tool that's very useful you can also increase you can expand the database uh, by of course by increasing the size but we won't do that right now because my database is currently running you also have the option to recreate it which will pretty much delete everything and then you have a fresh configuration if you need it under properties you can check which is the log file and how much is the uh, sorry data file and log file and the size of their current utilization now these are your most common uh, utility uh, for monitoring you can also use a performance monitor to kind of get an understanding about your platform uh, and the performance of your platform so as you can see yeah, performance monitor I can see the CPU utilization I can see um, memory memory utilization and whatnot I can go to data collector to collect set some parameters for system diagnostic for example firewall products these are some of the registry settings that you can change okay you can uh, define some report so you can um, these are for user data collector server performance monitor so various uh, uh, options that you can use uh, when it comes to uh, performing um, moni uh, performance monitor now you also have um, service account manager now let's assume that if you notice that these services that are running they're running with uh, windows services that means it requires a Windows service account now for whatever reason you may see as you can see the log on as sometimes they use a specific account if you need to change that uh, for whatever reason then you want to or uh, recreate a new service account you want to go to the service account manager and you just follow the instruction of how to change that service accounts as needed basis now you want to make sure that this, you do this during a time when there is not an uh, you know your, util your servers are not being utilized so here's example of my logger database that requires a specific logging account I can it, right now the status of the logging account is healthy and the password never expires is running so if I want to edit that I can uh, of course stop the services and what it does it allows me to either select an existing account or allows you to recreate a new one totally up to you you can also fix any group membership if there is any group membership issues so right now we don't we're not going to worry about much of modifications to this right now okay so these are some of the tools uh, that you can use for troubleshooting and of course there are more uh, CLI based troubleshooting tools that we're going to learn throughout this course but this is an introduction of your uh, ECCE utilities that you have now we also have a, a something called real-time monitor this is a real-time monitor that we have that can be used for troubleshooting as well it's a little small but in real-time monitor uh, which you can download from call manager uh, plat platform once you install it and you can add uh, what we call is UCCE inventory uh, nodes so you can go to the node you can add a new UCCE node which allows you to troubleshoot the UCCE or monitor UCCE from the RTMT now in order to add a new node you gotta make sure that ICM diagnostic service is running you gotta make sure you know the username and password with the privileges that allows you to monitor these nodes and you can group these nodes to a specific as a group that you might create like UCC groups or UCCX groups whatsoever and once you have that then you can monitor and manage uh, uh, import logs from uh, RTMT directly from the UCCE server 
All right, so the more about RTMT, RTMT will be covered in the upcoming videos. So this is basically it, the introduction. I will see you in the